In this video, we'll describe the installation process for the Evolution Ultrasonic Flow Sensor. These sensors can be used on copper, iron, PVC, resin, and stainless steel piping, and they clamp onto the piping and sense the flow without cutting pipes or system shutdowns. It's important to make note of the material and size of the piping before installing the sensors. Evolution offers two different flow sensor types, depending on the pipe size. For pipe sizes from quarter inch through two inch, use the Keyance FDQ flow sensor. Use the Keyance pipe size chart in the welcome packet to determine the specific model for each pipe size. The FDQ flow sensor options includes Keyance FDQ flow sensor controller, Keyance FDQ flow sensor clamp-on bracket. For pipe sizes from inch and a half through eight inch, use the Keyance FDR flow sensor. The FDR flow sensor option includes Keyance FDR flow sensor controller, Keyance FDR flow sensor upper bracket, Keyance FDR flow sensor lower bracket. Each sensor also includes a green sensor module, which sends the signal to the Evolution dashboard and all the necessary cables. Installation instructions and other supporting documents are included to help you along. Now, let's mount the flow sensors to the piping. The only tools you'll need are a Phillips head screwdriver, the pipe measurement kit that was included in the welcome pack, and perhaps a measuring tape to check mounting clearances. First, we'll need to find the best possible location. There are a few factors to consider when installing to get the most accurate readings. The flow sensors connect to the sensor module with a 10-foot or 30-foot cable. The sensor module requires constant power from a standard 110-volt AC electrical outlet. Each sensor module has a 4-foot power cord, so plan accordingly or arrange for power to be installed at the preferred location. Find a section of straight piping that's clean with no insulation, rust, or seams. If there's insulation on the piping, remove it by cutting a section away that's slightly larger than the sensor unit. Choose a section that's away from any sources of possible flow disturbances, such as pumps, controls, or excessive fittings. Avoid mounting on a vertical pipe with downward flow. Look for a horizontal section or vertical with upward flow. Refer to the chart in the installation packet for acceptable minimum distances. For our next step, we'll mount the sensors. There are two different bracket types depending on the sensor type and pipe size. The smaller FDQ sensors use a bolt-on clamp bracket, and the larger FDR sensors use a bracket with stainless steel threaded straps, like a hose clamp. Let's mount one of the smaller FDQ sensors. The brackets are designed to be used on two different pipe sizes, which are stamped into the upper part of the bracket. For example, this bracket is used for one inch and inch and a quarter piping. Just line up the arrow on the bottom half of the bracket with the corresponding arrow on the top half of the bracket. If the arrow points to the incorrect pipe size, just flip the bottom bracket over to match the arrows to the correct size. The controller mounting ring slides out of the way to expose the four bracket mounting screws. On a clean, smooth section of piping, straddle the pipe with the two sections of the bracket, reinsert the screws, and tighten them evenly in a star pattern until the bracket is snug and doesn't spin or slide. Slide the controller mounting ring back into position, then carefully reposition the controller within the bracket with the display screen upright and clearly visible. Tighten the two screws evenly so the controller is securely attached to the bracket. A good, firm installation will ensure a strong sensor signal and accurate readings. Insert the black 4-pin connector on the black cable into the controller, and then thread the locking ring until it's snug. Now, let's mount one of the larger FDR brackets to a section of piping. In the box, the controller is packaged separately from the bracket. Set the controller aside temporarily. First, flip the two hinged covers open to expose the quick-release clamp screw underneath. Loosen the screws on the upper bracket and flip up the quick release wings. Then pull the straps until they separate from the clamp. Loosen the strap clamps on the bracket, then gently pull the upper bracket and the lower bracket apart. On a clean, smooth section of piping, position the clamp around the pipe and screw the straps back together. And then tighten the clamp until it's snug and doesn't spin or slide. Close the hinge covers over the clamps. Carefully reposition the controller within the bracket so the screen is facing the proper direction and easily visible. Tighten the two Phillips head screws so the controller is securely and evenly attached to the bracket. The FDR flow sensor includes a short, black three-pin cable that connects to the sensor on the back of the bracket to the port with the red ring on the controller. Align the connectors and push them together gently, and then thread the locking ring until it's snug. Be patient and make sure the connectors align correctly. Don't force them because you may damage the connector pins. Just take your time. The kit also includes a 10-foot or 30-foot cable that connects the controller to the green sensor modules. Align the connector on the cable with the female connection on the sensor module. Insert it and then thread the locking ring until it's snug. 
The next step for this FDR sensor is to move on to connecting the other end of that cable to the sensor module, and then powering up the system. The two largest flow sensor brackets, the FDR125 and the FDR200, fit over piping that's six to eight inches in diameter, and they attach in pretty much the same way as the smaller versions, with just one added step. On the bracket, there are two tabs that hold the bracket assembly together for proper alignment. Before final tightening, just make sure that these two tabs on the inside half of the bracket are gripping the outer half. As an added bonus, these larger brackets have integrated clips for easy cable management. Next, we'll mount the green sensor modules. These modules relay the flow information from the sensors to the gateway, then onto the Evolution app. The sensor modules have a four foot power supply, so find a good location within reach and try to make them as accessible and visible as possible. There are a few ways you can mount the unit. You can attach them to walls with screws, or you can use the cable ties and attach them to insulated pipes, brackets, or hangers. The modules are splash proof, but not waterproof, so make sure they're mounted in a dry location. They also include electronics and small internal antennas, so don't mount them to hot or metal surfaces. The cable from the flow sensor has connector fittings that have notches that only allow the fittings to go together one way. Just rotate the connectors until they match up, insert, then spin the locking ring until it locks into place. Now that our sensors are mounted, let's power up the modules and connect them to the gateway. First, insert the power supply connector into the green sensor module, and then plug it into the 110 volt AC outlet. You'll notice that the controller on the flow sensor will light up and run through some diagnostics. The most important display on the controller to be aware of is the stability indicator. It's a series of LED bars that lets you know how stable the connection is between the sensor and the pipe. If you have less than three bars, you'll need to check the surface of the pipe where the sensor connects, or check the tightness of the pipe clamp. Once you have a strong signal, you're good to go. Your sensor module is ready to connect to the gateway. The system startup video will take you through the final steps to activate evolution in your property. Thanks for watching.